The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, right on. Featuring in-depth interviews with writers and showrunners in the entertainment industry. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, right on. Hey guys, my name is Ian Wesslin. Welcome to the first episode of Black Hollywood Live's Right On. Um, today we have a very special guest, Bentley Kyle Evans, showrunner extraordinaire. You might know him from sh- such shows as Martin or the Jamie Foxx Show, and uh, also Love That Girl. Uh, so yeah, uh, welcome. Well, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for being here. So it's exciting. I yeah. mean, this is this is really cool. I mean, I love what you got, what you guys are doing. I love the show, um, the concept of it. So this is great, man. Thank you, thank you uh, so much. We love what you do too. I, you know, I, I watched Martin growing up. Like, you know, dang, Gina, like, like it's like it's awesome. So yeah. it's 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 a, it's a pleasure to have you here. So um, I just wanted to get started. Just how'd you get here today? Like. Well, you know, I took the one on one, and mm-hmm. no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, um, it's it's an interesting. It's a you know, everybody's got a different path, mm-hmm. and um, mine, I, you know, I guess mine is is unique in its own way. Um, yeah, I started out in the industry as an actor, and I guess we'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I started out as an actor, not really even wanting to act, but I loved the industry, and I, you know, once I discovered that acting was really a viable uh, occupation and not just you're on TV, mm-hmm. then I realized that there was more to the entertainment business. There's a behind the scenes aspect that exists. And that's what I was more drawn to. And so the first time I read a script, which was uh, Hollywood Shuffle, the Hollywood Shuffle script, mm-hmm. the first time I read a you know script from, from cover to cover, I was hooked. And I said, that's what I want to do. Now, how do I get there? Uh, that's going to be a, you know, a journey. At the time, I was only uh, either 18, and about, uh, about 18 years old. So at that point, I knew early on that this was the game that I wanted to be in. So did you grow, uh, where did you grow up? Was it out here? <clears throat> yeah, I grew up here in LA. Um, I grew up in the uh, in Windsor Hills, View Park area. Um, uh, you know, up in the oil, up in the oil fields when you go into the airport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I grew up up there and, um, you know, it was kind of far away from the whole Hollywood scene. Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't even in my in my sights. I was a guy that um, all I saw was, you know, a hardworking dad uh, that went out and he was a real estate broker and I wanted to do that. And then, uh, you know, boom, hit, got hit with a curveball. Okay, entertainment, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Um, Still just as hardworking, just not in real estate. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's equal. Yeah, it's equal. I mean, it's just it's what your hustle is. I, I like to hustle. I like to work. Um, I'm no stranger to hard work. I still continue to to, to work. I know there's a lot of cliches that say, mm-hmm. work smart, don't work hard. I work hard. Mm-hmm. I like to work. There's no reason you can't do both. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason. Yeah, I, I I completely agree. So okay, so your first like when you started acting, what was your what was your first acting job and um. At, as with that transition into starting writing, what was your first script? So you know, it was um, it was interesting, um, and I, I've told the story a few different times in different ways because every time I tell it, I, I remember something different. But again, I was um, you know right out of high school, and really no real direction. wasn't a bad kid, a, a pretty good kid, I would say. And but I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I saw all my friends going away to college and. I was going, what am I going to do? What's, what's my life going to turn out to be? And, and I was getting that pressure at home, too. Uh, what's your life going to be mm-hmm. from my parents? So I, um, uh, I was with a friend of mine, uh, Tommy Morgan, one day, and he says, hey, man, look, um, we should try to get into this entertainment industry. And I said, man, that's for you. That's not for me. I, I'm good. I'm going to do the real estate thing. He says, no, I'm telling you. We're animated. We make people on the streets laugh all the time with our crazy antics. And, you know, we're cutting on each other on the schoolyard and stuff like that. Maybe there's a way that we can get in. I know a guy. So, 
you know, we're too young to know any better not to just go knock on somebody's door. But we did. Mm -hmm. And we knocked on Robert Townsend's door. <laughs> and we said, hey, we're here. We want to be in show business. We hear you're doing a movie, um, an independent movie. And uh, we want to be down. How do we? <laughs> so what do we do? What's what's you know what's the next step? Shows gumption. What did he say? He was looking at us like this. Okay, these guys are absolutely out of their minds. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hey, if you're serious, I can use the volunteers. So if you're mm -hmm. volunteering, like as an intern, um, I don't PA have. Or... He didn't even have a job description. He said, right. just be here tomorrow at six a.m. with a box of donuts if you're serious. <laughs> <laughs> So where'd you get the donuts? I went to a place uh, right there on the Highland and uh, what was it Highland and, and La Brea? I think at the time it was called Maggie's Donuts or something like that. I don't know if still there, <laughs> but I went and got those donuts and I was at his house, and that day changed my entire life. I we um we got to his house. And I saw these camera people and all these different people that were loading up all these trucks and cars and stuff. And it's pretty much everybody's cars, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And um, and he was like, "This, well, what are you waiting for? Open up your trunk. We got to load it up. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> and so you're scrambling. And we went over to uh, a, a post office over on Fairfax and uh, Santa Monica, which is still there. Mm -hmm. And that was the first, um, uh, the first location that we shot uh, Hollywood Shuffle in. Awesome. And so when I went in, I sat there and I was going, this is how movies are made? This is it? And it was like, yeah, this is it. I mean, it's you know, a lower budget and it's independent. It just doesn't have the big Hollywood people around, but mm -hmm. this, this is the same thing. And at that point I said, okay, I want to be in the business. So I talked to Robert about uh, you know, writing and he said, well, you know, that's definitely a possibility. I wrote this film. Uh, read it, see what you think about it. I read the script and I was blown away. He says, why don't you try acting? If you, because if you act, then you have more, um, you have more access to different producers and on different shows and stuff like that. And then pretty much you should blossom from there. And that's what I did. That's 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 great. Yeah. Um, okay. So what was the first script you wrote? So the well, the actual the first script I wrote, <laughs> the first script that I actually wrote actually landed me my first writing gig oh wow okay uh it was called uh it was called uh me and the boys mm -hmm. and it was um i was trying to do there was a show on a years ago called charles in charge and mm -hmm. it was with uh, scott bayo mm -hmm. and he was in charge of these kids he was kind of like a, a a male nanny yep manny yeah manny yep been and, there. <laughs> <laughs> and so i wanted to do something like that uh but i wanted to do it with african-american characters mm -hmm. and so i came up with this thing and i i showed it to uh martin lawrence and martin and i were extremely good friends we're still extremely good friends but uh he wasn't my and yet yeah, <laughs> he, yeah. He, was, he was martin lawrence yeah and he was Bilal from family uh from uh, uh house party mm -hmm. and so um i showed him because he was telling telling me that hbo independent was talking about doing a series with him so I, I showed him the script. He he told me that, uh, hey man, look, if if I can ever help you, you know, with this series that I'm getting ready to do, let me know if you want to audition. Maybe I can bring you in and give you preferential treatment. I said, man, if you want to help me, help me launch my writing career. He says, but you don't write. I said, okay. I showed up on the set of House Party Two where he was shooting, and I brought him. Uh, uh, a few different scripts, but the first script that I wrote was me and the boys, and I handed it to him, and he read it, and the very next day he called me and said, I had no idea. I had no idea that you were this talented, and I've never met anybody that's in my age group that could really put something like this on paper, so um, I'm going to make sure that when, when my career, do, when this show does launch, that you're involved somehow, and pretty much he took me right in and I bypassed so many different steps that I know a lot of young writers have to deal with right now mm -hmm. and took me right to the holy grail yeah. and I got hired on the show. That's amazing. So how old were you at this point? At this time, I'm 24. 24? Yeah. So how did you meet Martin to begin with? How did you... I met Martin on, a, on an audition. We were... Uh, we were actually up for the same role. Now, the, the irony there, I mean, look, I'm six foot five, and, uh, you know, Martin's uh, uh, considerably uh, shorter in stature than mm -hmm. I am. So, um, but we were up for the same role. I think they wanted two different types at NBC, and we were screen testing. 
And was it down just to the two of you? It was down to the two of us. Oh wow! All yeah, right. it was like some. Pro- <laughs> I think the project was called "A Little Bit Strange," and we were. It was like a, <laughs> a black monsters like the the. Uh, Herman Monster. Like, oh, yeah, Monster. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, ultimately, he ended up getting the role. And but we, we you know, we made a friendship there mm-hmm. and we stayed in contact. He knew very, you know, very few people in L.A. He was fresh in from uh, from Maryland. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he was a hot stand up. He was up and coming as a stand up. And so we just from that day on, we just became friends. And then we ended up booking a TV series together uh, called Hammer Slammer Slave, where we played these two sidekick characters with Eric LaSalle and oh, Jim wow. Brown and Bernie Casey, Isaac Hayes, and it was fun. It That's was like a, a powerhouse. Oh yeah, cast right yeah. There. It was a, a, a spinoff of uh, I'm gonna get you sucker. That, oh okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, so um, so that brings us up to uh, so was working working on this show with Martin, like that was your first real like staffing job, right? That was my first staffing job. And I told the showrunner, when he told me how much money I was going to make, I told him, really, you're going to really pay me to do this. I would have did this for free. I'd rather, I would pay you to, right? to, to get right? in and get this opportunity. But, um, you know, it was more money than that I had uh, ever made and, and would have imagined making at that age. Mm-hmm. And so I was blown away at the opportunity. Here I am going to Universal Studios uh, on a tour when I'm a kid, you know, every summer. And now I'm working on Universal Studios a lot. It was like mind blowing. And it happened so fast that, uh, you know, it just it just took me by storm. Do you remember like the moment where it kind of really hit you like that? That's what your life was. Was it, you know, seeing one of the golf carts drive by with a tour on it or you know at what moment did you really just take a second and just i don't know did you have a moment of realization yeah yeah, i did um i think the most the the one that stands out the most in my mind is uh um one day i took my father uh i took my father up to universal studios i had to go on the lot and go in my office for some reason and my dad was riding with me and we drove on the lot and when we pulled up to the security gate of course, I have a sticker on my mirror. So they just open up the gate and wave me through. Hello, Mr. Evans. And my father's sitting there in the passenger seat, and he's got this grin on his face. And he says, wow. And I said, what? He said, do you understand? Maybe maybe you don't understand. My father's born in 1928. Oh, okay? wow. Yeah. He says, maybe you don't understand. But there was a time, and it wasn't that long ago, where you couldn't even drive on this lot uh, with this with this skin color, yeah. unless you were cleaning it. Wow. He said, so to see that is just is just mind blowing because he's seen so many different generations and different decades pass, and it just blew him away. And then at that point, I realized, wow. I'd heard a lot of people say, you know, it hasn't changed for us, and I'm like, um, yeah, it's changed. It's 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 still changing. And of course, there's a lot of things that are still the same, mm-hmm. but it has definitely changed in our favor. So I was that that was a, 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 a eye opening experience for me. Well, I mean, just to that, you know, to that to that end, I mean, you you have been on the forefront in terms of of certain uh, accomplishments within like black writers. You know, it's um, you know being in the first chunk of black showrunners yeah you know like that's huge and and you know so you and martin was such a huge show and the jamie fox show was also huge in terms of bringing us to the forefront bringing you know bringing comedy that isn't you know that's black comedy but not necessarily just for black people you know like that that niche type of stuff like you've been that's what you've been doing and so like you're a part of history in that way so that's awesome and it's it's really inspiring that you're Father got to see it. Is your father still alive? My father's still alive. Awesome. Absolutely. So how's he doing? He's good. He's good. I mean, you know, I see him every Sunday, and uh, uh, you know, he's still that uh, that guy that you still look to for for strength and positivity. Because uh, you know, he wasn't the typical dad that's you know that's uh, playing catch outside with you and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. he was always business minded, and always very serious about what he did. So. It's kind of like I've taken on a lot of those traits to kind of follow in, in his footsteps in that way. Yeah. Um, and, and to be able to show my son, you know, th- it's all about keeping the, the generations going. 
if if that's what you're what you're into i'm trying to build a legacy and uh so yeah he's 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 you know he's a, he's proud he's proud he's a, he's a proud pop awesome yeah um okay so with uh uh is your mom in the picture yeah like, yeah uh she's absolutely she's yeah which is you know it's 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 really funny when you you can't you can't measure uh who had more uh, of of influence in your life, but uh, my mother's strong, extremely strong, and she's very much uh, into what I'm doing. She worked with me at Warner Brothers for a while. Really? Yeah, she did. And um, what did she do? She was uh, she was one of my personal assistants, but she's she's so um, organized. She's the mm -hmm. fastest typer I've ever seen. She's organized, and you know, like I said, she she has an influence over me. So of course, I'm going to listen to things that she says and her outlook and things like that. So, um, yeah, she's most definitely uh, always has been extremely present in my life and one of those moms that's like your number one cheerleader. So, you know, I think it, it definitely helped develop who I am, the, the uh, you know, just the two of them combined as one unit. I think that's kind of what really built who I am. That's, I mean, that's awesome. It's yeah. great that you have uh, such a strong family unit. That's, yeah, man. Yeah, like it, you can gr draw such strength from that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, you mentioned you have a son. Um, I do. Uh, so how old is he? My son's 15. 15? I have two kids. I have a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old. Okay. My daughter, Kylie, she's uh, 16. My son is Bentley Jr. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, I think they're going to go into this industry. My son is actually... Um, He's one of the co-stars on my new series, Family Time, which I guess we'll talk awesome. about. Awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah we're, we'll we'll move there. But since you mentioned it, um, what's you know, pitch Family me. Time? Yeah, pitch uh, me a little okay. bit. Well, let me give you let me give you a pitch. <laughs> yeah, just just a little bit. <laughs> so so Family Time is it's it's a it's just a a, a new family series. It's uh, it's it's the African American family experience it, in this day and time. Mm -hmm. It's I mean you know in the '80s you had you had Cosby, which was a very very good depiction of what um, a well-to-do uh, African-American family was at that time. Um, and so the, as the generations change and the, um, you know, the, the different storylines and the different um, styles and the, just the, the, the whole world changes. And so now we're doing a new depiction of what it is mm -hmm. in uh you know in 2014 mm -hmm. and you know it, it's skinny jeans it's uh <laughs> it's blisters uh, exactly it's <laughs> lols and smhs and yep. things of that nature you know a lot of social media involved but um it stars angel conwell and omar gooding who's uh the brother of uh cuba gooding Jim. oh okay yeah. yeah and so um it's fun it's it's um it's just a family of four and um it's kind of like a reflection of what my family has become in my house. Uh, I'm a family of four, mm -hmm. and and uh, you know, with my wife and my two kids, every morning at eight o'clock, it's a sitcom. Mm -hmm. Something happens, including mm -hmm. this morning. People are always coming in, ringing the doorbell. I got a delivery at my house this morning for an air conditioning unit. I was like, "This is not mine. What? Is, what is, why, why are you here?" <laughs> Well, it has your name on it. it. Indeed, it did, but it was supposed to go to my studio. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, here we go. Yep, so it, yep. it, it started the adventure, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, and, and all these ancillary characters, sisters, sister-in-laws, brothers, brother-in-laws. I've got a sister-in-law staying with me right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she's got a three-year-old. So I'm going, okay, so my life just changed again. Here yep. we go. Just got rid of a, a nephew and helped him get into a place. And now... We got a new guest, and it's it's, but it's all fun. It's all love, and I'm I'm proud to be in a position to help them when I can. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the 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 old adage goes, "Write what you know," right? That's and right. So you have to write what you know, <laughs> yeah. and that's exactly what I, what I tell people all the time. Anytime I give anybody a bit of advice, I say, "Listen, I would love to write a, a, a espionage spy movie, but I know nothing about that." So I doubt if I ever write that because that's not what my world is about. Mm -hmm. um, primarily, I've been writing comedies. Um, I love comedy. That's like I think um, something that defines me. That word is is part of my definition. But I like drama too, and I do want to write drama. That, I think that I think that's my next foray. Yeah. Is going into the the the, the, uh, the dramatic thing. Um, Getting an hour longs. I, I would like to do that. Yeah. I'd like to do that. 
got uh, a few really ideas bouncing around that I do. Yeah, it's, yeah, got a couple of ideas bouncing around, and again, it's you know kind of stuff that you know or that you've been that I've been um, privy to. Um, uh, you know, different people. Uh, I, I've my my life is interesting because I've met so many different people, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was growing up or just through the industry, and they've got so many uh, diverse backgrounds and stories that I'm going. I got to tell that story because I know it because I've been with you. Yeah, and, <laughs> they may not be the prettiest stories, mm -hmm. but the grittier sometimes the better. Well, I mean, I I, I as a writer myself, I, I find myself uh, often struggling with. Okay, when somebody tells me a story instantly in my head, I'm like, I'm. It's it's almost like Instagram. I see, uh, I see the world through whatever filter it is that I'm currently working on. So it's like if working on my web series, I anything, any story, any like anecdote, anything like that. I'm like, okay, could I use that in that? You know, it's it's that sort of thing. And I find myself struggling to be like um, in the moment sometimes a little bit because as I hear this stuff and and talking with people, uh, you know, it's my writer self, my introspective, very like, I should be off writing thing, like tends to kick in. Um, for you, are, you seem very extroverted, you're a very extroverted person. The writing process, the, the ability to get in, um, you know, and take that time and, you know, take a step back, like what is your, what's your process like? I'll tell you what my process is. Um, I'll lead in by saying that um, I, as a writer, and, and what I consider to be a writer, mm -hmm. I haven't really got there yet. And here's what I mean by that when I say that. Mm -hmm. I've written several scripts, um, several that have been produced, but I, I feel like I haven't given my, my best yet because I haven't, you know, uh, taken myself outside and, and secluded myself, taken myself from outside and secluded myself into a world to where it's just me and that computer screen or that mm -hmm. pen and pad and really get into what I really want to do. And I know that there's, there are pieces inside of me that are, that are brilliant that I haven't even expressed yet. Mm -hmm. And I have to do it um, while I still have the energy and want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but my process is simple. I, you know, I, you know I'm, a, I'm a guy that I'm conflicted because I have, I'm a business-minded person. So I'm always thinking more like a producer, mm -hmm. and sometimes that affects the writing because I'm going quick. I got to do it quick. I got to get it do, do it quick. And as we know, writing sometimes takes years. I mean, my good friend John Ridley, who just won the the Oscar, uh, we wrote together on Martin. And mm -hmm. oh wow, you know, John took. I think it took John four years to do Twelve Years a Slave, but John always writes. I'm more of how do we make money off of this thing, and how do we put this thing together, and business models and things of that nature. But I want to take the time to just say, no one bother me for uh, the next year. I don't want to be bothered. I want to write. I want to write a piece or two pieces and have those be my real passion pieces. I haven't done that yet. My process is simple. I love to have a, a nice dark room with you know candles and things of that nature. I love scents when I'm writing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of like to escape who I am and what's going on and just kind of get into this world of imagination. Mm -hmm. um, I like to have my incense going, my, my soft Brazilian music playing, and I like to be alone when I'm doing it. I don't like people around. I'm probably cranky mm -hmm. when I'm doing it, um, you know, so my kids kind of know. They smell the incense. Oh, don't <laughs> bother him. That, <laughs> that guy's on a path right now. So um, you're you're honestly the first person that I've uh, talked to, and you know, in writing that like puts a focus on like smells on incense, and that's that's incredibly uh, interesting to me because it is the thing most most linked to memory, your olfactory sense, and so for you to to do that to evoke uh, something that's I don't know, I think that could be a really good tip for you know uh, yeah. starting writers is like that's part of your your senses that's really cool yeah i mean it's it's, it's just something that i adapted I, I didn't get it from anybody i just i know that i have you know written and i didn't didn't have that and it, it, you kind of feel like something's missing something's missing ah because i like to be relaxed when mm -hmm. i'm writing i want to be a hundred percent relaxed i usually like to write in the hours of about 9 p.m to about 3 a.m which is a nice you know nice six hour 
period that the majority of the world is sleeping. Mm -hmm. So you're not, the phone's not ringing. No one's ringing the bell. Um, you know, everybody's resting. And so I feel like I'm getting ahead. I'm in a sense, it's, it's like cheating. I'm, 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 I'm using uh, borrowed time because I should be sleeping, but I'm getting ahead during these hours. And it's a, it's a whole mental trip. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, it's weird. I, when I, when I write, I don't, I don't shave. Um, I want to feel like a bit of, I guess a bit of suffering in a sense, like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, really in this thing yep. and I don't, those other things don't matter. Mm -hmm. So when I say that I haven't really taken the time to really go in and do that the way that I'd like to, it's just, I, I, life gets in the way. You have too mm -hmm. many other responsibilities as a father, as a husband, as a brother, as an uncle. Uh, I mean, so, as a showrunner. As a showrunner. Like, we haven't show even, yeah, we like, haven't even gotten into that. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, and, and that's kind of where I want to segue is, um, and I think you were, you were tapping into it in the idea of uh, writing a feature versus writing you know, a script, and you, you have much more of a producer's mentality. And I think that's what uh, separates showrunners from writers. Yes. Um, is, is, you know, as you're writing, you're also thinking about production and you're thinking about budgets and you're thinking about time frames and, you know, it's one thing to just be able to, to just focus and, you know, you've got your boss and, all right, I just, I'm, I'm being sent out on this script and, right. you know, it's, that's one complete thing. But to have the skill set and the people skills and also the writing clout behind yourself to be a showrunner, that that's something special and yeah. so um when did you know that show running was was what you wanted to do or did you kind of fall backwards into it no you know i once i started writing i didn't even know what the showrunner um title really meant mm -hmm. i had always heard somebody that runs the show i didn't even realize that that was a a real um occupation and, and you, you got to think this is around so you're talking about 1992 mm -hmm. and at that time, it's not too many um, African Americans, even in that industry, in like that, in the writers' room, let alone running it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I'm watching the guys that came before me, the John Bowmans of the world. That uh, was the, he was the showrunner for In Living Color and uh, other shows. And I'm I'm looking at all these guys and hearing their stories, telling me about the days of working with Danny Thomas, and I'm like how old are you guys <laughs> and they're telling me these different stories and i'm watching them i'm learning the game from them that it's not about the joke it's not always about the joke sometimes it's about the structure and sometimes you don't always have to try to move the emotion with the big broad bow joke sometimes it's about subtlety and it took me about a good year for that to soak in sitting in that writer's room learning from those guys but after my second year in the writer's room, and pretty much you're there all year round, it's like school, I pretty much adapted my own way of doing things. So when the, the showrunner would step out of the room, I just had the innate ability to jump in and say, this is how we should do this, let's move ahead. And I was pretty much following their template, but with my own spin on it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I knew at that point, I wanna, I can't wait to get to the point to where I can run my own show. And it happened a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. Um, at the time, our showrunner for Martin left and went to do, uh, I forgot the show that he went to do. And so they were looking for different showrunners and somehow my name came up <clears throat> and I said second after the third season. Mm -hmm. And so I get a call from uh, the president of HBO, Chris Albrecht, and, uh, he says, uh, where are you? Get back in town. I need to meet with you. And I, I go up to meet with him. When I hear that he wants to talk to me, in my mind, automatically I'm thinking I'm fired. Fired, yeah. It's over. <laughs> always fired. It's a great run. <laughs> and, you know, my man thanks Martin. Thanks for the money. <laughs> thanks for the money and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So I go to meet with Chris and he tells me, hey, man, listen, you, uh, I, want, I want to talk to you about something serious here. We can't really find a showrunner that um that vibes with what martin's vision is with this show and since you're very close with him and you guys have a really good working relationship um maybe you could take on that 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 uh showrunner position now my heart's beating inside mm -hmm. but i'm i'm i'm, I'm poker face yep i'm poker facing yep. it out yep. you're not not gonna break me i'm like 
yeah, well, you know, I mean, that could, that could work. And I'm going, is he saying what I think he's saying? So I said, so what are you thinking? So maybe in like a, a supervising producer, uh, you know, category, is that, is, that, is that what you're seeing me in, in that kind of position? He says, no, I want you to run the show. I said, yeah, well, you know, I could do that. <laughs> now, the inside, you're just freaking out. Flashing right? lights, dollar signs, all this kind of thing falling right. And then he says, uh, he, he hits me with a curveball. He says, uh, I'm not going to pay you showrunner money, though. I said, hmm? Uh, you know, of course, you know, I'm going like this. Is it, is it the paint job? What's yeah. <laughs> right? Right? Well, like, the, that was literally my thought, too. I mean, like, really, really, yeah. that's what it was. And he says, no, it's not that. Um, um, I want you to prove to me that you can do the gig. If you can do the gig for this year, I'm going to make your career. I said, okay, so I felt a little bit slighted. Yeah. But it was still a big, huge increase in salary, more money than I thought that I would ever make. So, so, so you did get a pay bump, just, oh, not, just not the the amount. Because like, I just wanted to talk about the payment thing uh, just for a second, like the compensation that writers get. Sure. Because it is something, uh, I'm fairly new out here. I've only lived out here for about a year. And uh, I moved out here to be a writer. And I was just like, I'm going to write. Like, I don't know how much I make, but as long as I'm writing, I'm happy, right? <laughs> you know, I had no idea. And then uh, the other day, like literally like a week ago, I um, was reading something and it was the WGA, you know, thing. And it was just like, I saw what the base pay is for just a staff writer. And I was like, wait, that's a week? <laughs> and it just, it blew my mind. And so um, I've been having conversations where it's like showrunners and stuff, you know, it, you are very well compensated yeah. for, for this stuff. And it is a very stressful job. But, um, and so uh, back at that time, the WGA was there. So were you a member of the WGA? And I became a member of the WGA on the Martin Show. So, you, you know, you had to be. They, they taffed Hartley you right away mm -hmm. as soon as you get on staff. And, you know, you have to make that uh, ex extremely large payment to get in. Mm -hmm. And then once you're in, you're in. Um, you know, it's a good institution to be a part of. Um, so, I, you know, I jumped in and I saw the pay scale. Um, and I saw the same, pretty much the same list that you saw. Of course, with inflation, it's a lot more now. Yeah. But back then, but it back was then. like, whoa, yeah. what? <laughs> and people used to ask, like, different friends, and you didn't want to get into your dollar amount at that time. So they would say, what kind of money is it? And I'm like this, it's NBA basketball player money. And they're like this, get out of here. I'm like, no, it's, it is. Yeah, not it, mad at that. It, it, it really is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you pretty much make as much as an off-the-bench player. Yeah. So it's like that's, that's a good comparison. It's a good analogy. It, <laughs> yeah. it is, and so it's like okay, cool. I was just I'm playing a different game. It's it's a league, and it's going up in the whole nine yards. So, um, but then when you get to become a showrunner, again, it's life changing. Um, for us, the sad part is, and I, and me in, included, um, you know, money doesn't come with instructions. Mm -hmm. I, I always say that it does mm -hmm. not come with instructions. So you don't know what to do. And um, as you know, as blacks in America, we're we're we don't have too many generations that have come no. before us to help us yeah. understand the institution of financial uh, of, of finances. Yeah, no, so, so right. Yeah, so so you know you you have to learn how to move and how to save and how to not run out and buy the the Lamborghini and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and just really try to make it make it last. And and uh, and I, you know, for me, it was about I was trying to build a family, so. My priorities were in different places than other people's priorities. Whatever, whatever people's priorities are, that's fine with them. So yeah, you you were about to have kids right about this time, right? Or had you already no. had the kids? No, when I started, I didn't have my first. Yeah, my first child was born, um, what five years after I started. Uh, so we were after you started writing. After so, I started so, writing. So um, so. How long was it from starting writing to, to being to that conversation at, with HBO? That happened uh, three years in. Three years. Okay, so yeah, you're still two years out from even having kids. Yes. So, oh, wow. All right. And so Martin went for seven seasons? How many Martin, seasons? Martin went for, uh, he went for five seasons, but okay, five. the episodes that we shot were probably the equivalent of seven because we were shooting 27 episodes a, a no season. No way. Yeah. You must have been constantly in production. Constantly. Like, like just round the clock constantly <laughs> yeah that's 
but wow. but the, but now the mind-boggling thing is i was doing 27 episodes a year then mm -hmm. on just one show i mm -hmm. thought that was crazy i just shot 33 episodes of love that girl in three months that's absolutely insane <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy that's like that's like three day turnaround yeah on 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 episodes that's that's insane yeah that's we, so, that's, we were rocking yeah we were, we were i have a i have a team that i work with and you know we realize that we're in a content driven business now mm -hmm. things have changed and um there's too many other outlets and um so you've got to constantly, you know, with the web, you got to constantly keep feeding things and yep. the Netflix model and the Hulu models. And there's going to be so much distribution and so many opportunities that you got to think ahead. Like, yep. how can we churn out this stuff a lot faster? And again, that's where the business mind comes in. Yep. I want to take my time and, and do my passion pieces. And, and, I, and I hope that I get to do that. Yeah, well, I mean, clearly you have been, and clearly you're going to continue to do that. You have the drive, you have the experience, and yeah. you also have the connections. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, speaking to that whole business mindset, I can relate to the the crazy production schedule for like with my web series. I created it, um, and I was like, how how do I shoot a lot of this for no money? I have no money, no you know, no connections. And I was like, okay, I came up with a format that we could shoot three in a day, you know? And and so now that it's gaining speed and whatever, it's like, all right, now I have to not only be doing the PR and doing the whatever, but I have to be back in the writing, uh, getting it done so that we can be shooting in two weeks from now, doing another three episodes that can be, you know, and just getting that machine going. And it's, it's about momentum. It's about, you know, once you're up and going, you're, you're working on Martin, right? And right. you're and you're just you're pushing through and you're doing 27 episodes and you don't even know that that's that's abnormal almost you know like you it's, no it's just that's your that's your normal yeah and so then you get off of that and so at what point do you decide to like bring in the jamie fox show like so so the jamie fox show came about um uh right after the fourth season of of martin um my agents asked you know what you know what's your long-term goal here do you want to um branch out and are you are you just primarily working with martin that's no i mean martin's my my guy that's my buddy but uh i i got a career to make here mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i want to do other things and i had written a film for martin at the time too so i was toying with the idea of going into writing feature films and and going that route as opposed to just sitcoms but then i got approached with a uh, a deal from warner brothers to come over and you know pretty much get a, a, a you know nice office on the lot nice housekeeping deal and a development deal what do you mean by housekeeping deal that's just a that's just a, a term that they used to call yeah. I don't I don't know if they still uh, utilize that term but it was a it was a term that they used to use the housekeeping deal so that basically you're in-house oh, okay and you're on the they, lot they, so they're literally keeping you in-house and, okay. and you're and you're exclusive <laughs> yes, okay yes. yes all right all right that yeah. makes sense yeah you're, you're locked in <laughs> yep and so um so Wait, isn't that just a development deal now is that what it's, it's called it's pretty much the same exact okay. thing it's pretty all much right. just your, your development deal okay and um and so, you know, they, they put me in that position. I, I decided, hey, look, I got to do this. This is the move. And it was really tricky because the president that I spoke to you about, uh, mm -hmm. Chris Albrecht, he says, hey, man, there's a problem here. I see that you're doing this deal with Warner Brothers, but in your contract, you got one more year of Martin to do. And you told me that, you know, I told you that I would, you know, uh, make your career. And you said that you were there for, you told me that, that you were gonna follow through with your commitment. And I said, I am gonna follow through with my commitment. And so I was at a fork in the road because he told me that you can't do that other, sh you can't do the Jamie Foxx show. And I'll explain to you how I got there mm -hmm. with the Jamie Foxx show. But they worked it out with uh, Warner Brothers because Warner Brothers and HBO were owned by the same company, which is Time Warner. And of course the upper echelon people worked it all out and everything and allowed me to run both shows at the same time. But the Jamie Foxx show actually came about when, uh, I think when Jamie, when, when I got to the, to Warner Brothers and I decided to take the deal, the first name that I saw on the list that I was interested in working with was Jamie Foxx. Mm -hmm. And so they put us together and they put me together with his managers and Jamie told me the type of show that he wanted to do. And I went into development mode and started writing a pilot. And we both collaborated on it. I wrote the script. 
he collaborated and we shot a pilot for the WB. Originally it was for ABC, ABC wanted it, but um, the WB put in a better offer. Yeah. It was a new new network and we mm-hmm. decided to go that route. So that was around the time, they, yeah, because they were still, the, w was still, the WB was still the WB. Yeah. And they still had, uh, you know, like they had Dawson's and they had, you know, everything on, on there that, you know, they were a huge network at that yeah. time. Totally understand. Yeah. Uh, why, why you'd go that route. Um, uh, so you had the Jamie Foxx show. Um, what was some of the stuff you learned uh, just in trying to, to do the double team, like in terms of time management, in terms of, uh, you know, not burning out. Like uh, at this point, are you even writing, or are you just kind of running the rooms? I'm uh, I'm writing at that time. I'm writing more still for Martin. Mm-hmm. Although the Jamie Fox show is my creation, mm-hmm. um, I'm just pretty much overseeing the Jamie Fox uh, show at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I guess, in the true sense of what that showrunner is. I'm. I'm in the room, and then once I feel like it's moving, I've got a second in command that I could leave the show with, and I could dip across the street. Fortunately for me, they were across the street from each other, Universal Studios and Warner Brothers right yep. across. So um, it was it was probably the most challenging thing that I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, I was losing weight like you would not believe because I was stressed beyond belief. And it wasn't the job that was so stressful. It was just the hours and moving and mm-hmm. and you know, just trying to please this new company that I'm working with, but keep my uh, obligation to the old company and my good friend. So it was a uh, it was it was a heavy turnaround for me. No, I feel like that is kind of a bigger lesson for those who want to be showrunners. Is is you are constantly in you are I, I guess like the linchpin basically. Yeah. You know, like you you're dealing with networks. You're also dealing with your cast. You're also dealing with your writers. You're dealing with production. You're dealing, you know, you're dealing with everyone. And so, you, yeah, you have like you are stressed. <laughs> you're, 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 you become a referee. You become a babysitter. You become um, everything. Yeah. You become everything to these people. Everybody's pulling your, you know, your your sleeve. And then you have to deal with your home life and that balance as well. And it's it's quite quite a bit of, of work for one person, especially when you've never been in that position before Mm -hmm. and i was able to pull it off and sometimes i say how did i how was i able to do that when i think back but um it was just some just something that i just stepped up to the challenge if i thought about it i would probably would have psyched myself out Mm -hmm. so i just jumped in and did it i and i i I honestly and i'd like to to discuss like you know because you did come up at a different time where media was different and everything was different what have you seen in terms of show running, in terms of, of, of the business, specifically in terms of show running, what have you seen that's changed over this time? What has kind of remained the same? Um, have you like taken time to think about that much? Yeah, I mean, you know, when, when I think of what the quintessential uh, showrunner is, it's the same. Nothing's really changed there. Um, I think that that format is um, something that some would say is antiquated, but I don't believe it is. I think it's something that still works the same, the same uh, format of running a writer's room, um, uh, primarily with comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, you get bits and pieces from everybody in the room. Sometimes I break the room up and, and I go do my own thing and I'll take two people with me and one writer's assistant and we go and we'll, I'll say I don't need the whole room because that's going to throw me off because at the end of the day, as the showrunner, it's still your vision. And even if someone hires you to come in and show run their show, and at some point it still has to take on your personality. And so sometimes I, I'm not a uh, I'm not a fat like the fastest guy when it comes to thinking. I'm a thinker. So mm-hmm. everybody's throwing out jokes, and I'm going, ah, that's not it. That's not it. And then when I hear it, I know it. Mm-hmm. Or if I come up with it myself, I know it. I present it to the room, and we do it. So it's it's the same. I don't think it's changed. I don't think it's changed too much. But I love what's happening now as far as how to get your content out. And you were talking about web series. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 I, I haven't figured out how you monetize that yet, but I know that there is a way, and I just haven't taken the time to really delve into that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'd like to ask you just, um, uh, do you have like kind of one epic fail that you learned, you know, like, like something that you just... 
you screwed up. It was it, it kind of on, you know, on your on your end, just in terms of, of writing or just like a moment that you it was a lesson learned, like something that you, you can from, take away from from writing or from the business itself. Um, specifically for show running. But like, I mean, like, that, so in that can either that can be either. So either either one, I guess, is is definitely there's there's a there's a couple of things. Sure. Um, one is that I I, I became friends with my cast a lot. And sometimes that's not the best thing because sometimes you do need to keep that separation and so that you can say no. And I'm not really a, a guy that likes to say no because I don't like hurting people's feelings, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's very necessary to do that. And so befriending a lot of my cast members kind of I think it was a setback. And then I had the opportunity to do a little bit more at Warner Brothers, but it's just like anybody else who's had an opportunity. When you're winning, you think it's always gonna continue to win. The money's gonna keep continue to come. Mm -hmm. The opportunities are gonna continue to come. And I took a little bit of time off. It was one season where I just didn't feel like developing pilots. And, and again, kind of spoiled. Mm -hmm. And I didn't take advantage of the time that I had on that lot as a showrunner. Mm -hmm. And I think the way that I work nowadays, if I had that same mentality back then, I I could have really, really done more in my career, but I'm happy with what I have uh, achieved and it's been a lot, but um, I feel like every day it's just getting started. So I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, no, the, I think that's great advice is, you know, take advantage of opportunities as they as they come because they're not always going to be there they're not always going to be there jump on it and and don't be afraid to jump on it and it's it's a belief system it's like right now i have a studio and i've, I've started my own studio and i feel like this could be the beginning of what warner brothers has become i don't see the difference between what i've done and what steven spielberg is doing mm -hmm. and and what i what I aspire to do, yeah. but it has to start somewhere, and I believe it. So um, I'm just working tirelessly and effort, you know, but it's effortlessly because it's what I love. That's that's awesome. And so yeah, you've got this this uh, soundstage that you've got yeah. um, that you're trying to build up um, right now, and that's going well for you. And you know, you're expanding and you're helping other people out right now. Absolutely. Like that, and that's you know, I guess that's the dream is you you work tirelessly all the way up and then you help others to, to bring up. Right? I think that's what you want to do. I think ultimately, you know, it's at some point you have to realize it can't be all about financial gain. It, it just can't unless you're just greedy. And I'm not, I, I want to give opportunities. I want to give uh, younger writers and directors and producers the opportunity to come through um, and make a name for themselves. And, and mm -hmm. I've been very instrumental in a lot of people that are working right now, I gave uh, Janine Sherman her very first job, and she is the showrunner uh, for uh, what is the show? The it's not Grey's Anatomy; it's one of those shows it's, um, uh, with Shamar Moore. <laughs> I can't, oh, oh, I don't uh, know why I can't. Think um, of it. The one with Shamar is uh, it's an LA one. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, uh, we'll put it in the notes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we'll put that in the notes. We'll put it in the Janine, notes. Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I just can't think of it right this second. Yeah. But um, but I, I, you know, I gave her the opportunity. She's one of the most sought after. Uh, African American females next to Shonda Rhimes. She's mm -hmm. running. She's. C it's not a CSI, but it's one of those. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's the LA. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Mara Brock. You know, I've given Mara Brock. Uh, you know, the, the the opportunity to to do what she's done, and now she's got being Mary Jane and the game and huge. girlfriends. Yeah. And she came through my 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 camp and um, so many others. Again, you know, John Ridley. We worked together early on, and. Everybody's been able to do what they do now, and that's what I want to continue to do. I want to be what Quincy Jones is to music, what Barry Gordy was to the Motown, uh, to, the, to that whole era. That's what I really want to, in, in, in my notes, that's what I, my, my footnotes, that's what I want to be remembered for. Well, and I think you're well on the, on the way to that. And so I guess to that end, in, in, in wrapping up, because uh, our hour is over. Man, that's a quick hour. I know, right? Yeah. It was, it was, it's good. Uh, um, is there, what's one piece of advice you could give to future showrunners, future you know, writers, um, that you can give the advice, but they're not going to learn it until they do it? You know, and they're not going to learn until they experience it themselves. 
something on that line? Um, you know, everything comes with experience. You, you can't, I mean, you know, like I asked my father a lot, how come you didn't tell me certain things? And he says, because I knew you weren't gonna, you weren't going to listen. You have to you have to get out there and feel it for yourself. As far as being a showrunner, um, you know, there's there's no real advice other than just continue to push forward because again, the the, the showrunner title and the business is starting to make have, you know, little changes and things like that, but it's still the same thing. And it would and it would just be to continue to assert yourself, um, continue to not take no for an answer, stand up for your work and what you believe in, but also compromise when you when you have to compromise with the network and whoever you're working to get your content to, whether it's a studio or a network. As a showrunner, you have to learn there is a certain posture that you must take. Mm -hmm. It can't always be your way because then you kind of burn a bridge mm -hmm. sometimes. So sometimes the compromise is okay. I see it your way, but I'll give you. I'll give you four. You give me six. Mm -hmm. You continue to keep the upper hand, but always learn how to, you know, talk. And it's it is a game. I hate to put it like that, but it's a game that we have to play. Mm -hmm. And so I think that showrunners must understand that, um, in order to get to that level, there's a certain. Uh, way that you have to learn how to deal with people and talk with people that has nothing to do with your writing ability. It's just about um, the politics. And I have learned how to uh, be somewhat of a good politician yeah. and maintain my my quality and level of writing. Well, and like clearly you've been able to do that and you've done it well and many people can learn from your uh, your example. And I hope so, so. Yeah, no, and like seriously, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Um, my name is Ian Westland. This is Bentley Kyle Evans. How can people find you? Oh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Bentley Kyle Evans. You can find me at Twitter, it's, it's Bentley Kyle Evans on Twitter, uh, at Bentley Evans mm -hmm. on Twitter. Uh, I've got an Instagram. I just started that. I'm I'm new to that. So awesome. can, it's all it's all under my name, Bentley Evans. And so we've got you've got two shows right now, I've and got, then the third. I'm on right? my third. I've yeah. got uh, my crazy roommate on Bounce. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, Family Time that's coming to Bounce uh, with ten new episodes. I love that girl that's currently on the air right now on TV One and more episodes to come and I got a lot more coming so I, hopefully I can come back and share. Awesome. Yeah, please do. You're yeah. welcome back anytime. Seriously, yeah, this was absolutely. a great conversation. Thank you so much for being our first guest Thank and you. yeah. Um all right guys, we'll see you later. Right on. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in-depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.